coronal mass ejections. The most powerful events in the solar system. Coronal mass ejections CMEs, are large clouds of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona released into space after an eruption. A large CME can contain a billion tons of matter, accelerate to several million kilometers per hour, and expand through space. Solar material streams out through the interplanetary medium, impacting any planet or spacecraft in its path. CME clouds can erupt in any direction, and then continue on in that direction, plowing right through the solar wind. CMEs are often, but not always, associated with erupting prominences, disappearing solar filaments, or flares. The relationship between flares and CMEs is not well understood. Solar flares can trigger CMEs, but sometimes CMEs occur without flares. A coronal mass ejection CME, is a massive burst of solar wind, energetic particles, plasma, and magnetic fields rising above the solar corona or being released into space. CMEs disrupt the flow of the solar wind and cause disturbances that can damage systems in near-Earth and on Earth's surface. When a CME is directed towards Earth, it can cause geomagnetic disturbances that lead to bright auroras, short-circuit satellites, and power grids, and even endanger astronauts in orbit. A geomagnetic storm is one of the most common forms of space weather that refers to any time Earth's magnetosphere, the magnetic field surrounding the planet, undergoes sudden and repeated change. CME can travel through space at about a million miles per hour, 1.6 million kilometers, taking from 17 hours up to 3 days to cross the distance from the Sun to the Earth's orbit. It can be caused by high-speed blasts of the solar wind and when a CME connects up with the magnetosphere. The Sun's magnetic fields peel back the outermost layers of Earth's fields changing the very shape of the magnetosphere. The magnetic fluctuations caused by a geomagnetic storm in Earth's magnetosphere, can cause electric currents to form currents on Earth. These are called geomagnetically induced currents, or GICs. Most GICs are caused by CMEs. CMEs interact with the Earth's magnetosphere causing it to rattle or fluctuate. Because of the sudden changes in the magnetic fields, induced currents are produced due to electromagnetic induction. GICs can flow through railroad tracks, underground pipelines, and power grids. It can run through long metal structures. In extreme cases, they can cause blackouts by overloading circuits, tip breakers, and destroy transformers. A massive spray of high-energy particles blasted from the sun and shot into space during a magnificent solar eruption captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory satellite on June 7, 2011 over a period of six hours when an M-2 class, medium-sized, solar flare, a large prominence eruption, and a coronal mass ejection were observed from sunspot complex. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory caught this image of an eruption on the side of the Sun over June 18, 2015. The eruption ultimately escaped the Sun, growing into a substantial CME. This imagery is shown in the 304 angstrom wavelength of extreme ultraviolet light, a wavelength that highlights material in the low parts of the Sun's atmosphere and that is typically colorized in red. The video clip covers about four hours of the event. On August 31, 2012 a long filament of solar material that had been hovering in the Sun's atmosphere, the corona, erupted out into space at 4.36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The CME traveled at over 900 miles per second. The CME did not travel directly toward Earth 
but did connect with Earth's magnetic environment, or magnetosphere, causing aurora to appear on the night of Monday, September 3rd. The picture includes an image of Earth to show the size of the CME compared to the size of Earth. A coronagraph is a special type of telescope that uses a solid disk, a coulter, or a coulting disk, to actually cover up the sun itself, completely blocking direct sunlight and allowing us to see the atmosphere around the outside of the sun, known as the corona. Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, Blasco C2 Coronagraph, caught the action as three, separate CMEs blasted out in succession from the Sun, December 12, 2010. These were each distinct and unconnected events. The first CME, CME1, event, directly on the right, occurred when a magnetic filament erupted, the second, CME2, one erupted near the Sun's North Pole, and the last CME, CME3, erupted on the far side of the Sun. Because all three eruptions occurred within a matter of hours, the coronagraph images suggest a single cloud, but that is not how it happened. None of the particle clouds seemed headed towards Earth. The frequency of CMEs varies with the 11-year solar cycle. At solar minimum we observe about one CME a week. Near solar maximum we observe an average of 2 to 3 CMEs per day. In September 1, 1859 the telegraph system in North America and Europe collapsed when a huge CME crashed into the Earth. Telegraph was the main means of communication for business and personal contacts in those days. In some cases, telegraphs provided electric shocks to operators, in other cases, their lines sparked in populated areas and in some places started fires. Telegraph operators discovered that currents from the intense aurora borealis was flowing through their systems, causing their telegraph keys to melt and stick in position. The incident was named Carrington Event in the scientific community. The Carrington event was the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history. It created strong auroral displays that were reported globally. The Hydro-Quebec of Canada Power Network collapsed on March 13, 1989 due to geomagnetically induced currents GICs. Caused by a transformer failure, this event led to a general blackout that lasted more than 9 hours and affected over 6 million people. The geomagnetic storm causing this event was itself the result of a CME ejected from the Sun on March 9, 1989. On July 23, 2012, a Carrington-class solar superstorm, solar flare, coronal mass ejection, solar energetic particles, was observed, but its trajectory narrowly missed Earth. If a Carrington-class event or solar superstorm happened today, most experts agree it would fry our power, GPS, and communication systems. The damage to satellites and power grids can be very expensive and disruptive. Geomagnetic storms are more disruptive now than in the past due to our greater dependence on systems that can be affected by electric currents, for example, electronics, and energetic particles high in the Earth's magnetosphere, for example, satellites.